Hey guys, I'm going to make a video on installing an SX core on your Nintendo Switch. This is for educational purposes only. I am not liable for anything you do for your Switch, whatever you use it for. This is just a installation on how to do some of the soldering. So let's get started. You gotta make sure your switch is off. All right, take the Joy Cons out. Now I gotta take out the screws. That there are two different types of screws. There is your small. Phillips heads, you have one, two, you got three here, and then you should have one back here under your micro SD card. So we'll take those out. And then you have your tri-wing, which is one, two, three, four. And then there are two more that you need to take out. It'll be the middle here. Uh, this one's already taken out. Also, this one's already taken out. But it's these two middle ones. Then your back should come off. And then you have your back off. So next, you want to take off this one right here, hold your micro SD reader in, you want to slowly pry that up, the connector is down here, take that off. Now you have some more, these are Phillips again, you have one here, one here one here, one here, and one here. Let's go ahead and take those off. And that should come off. I like to be careful because you have your thermal paste here. So if you put it flat down, if it gets on something that you don't want it to get on, just be careful where you place that. Now, the next thing to do is take off your battery because you have the power going to it. So if you have tweezers, that is usually the best way to go about it, in this case. Oh. I have these angled ones, so I'll just put it under here, lift up, now battery's disconnected. So we need to get to the chip down here, so we are going to take off the heat sink. So these three right here.
pull this off. Again, you have thermal paste on both sides, so just be careful on where you're putting it. And now we can take the shield off. Now the shield's a little tricky. Um, I've bent a couple of these before. So you have these small, very small tabs. Uh, for instance, like here's one of them right here. And you have two on this side right there. Also right here. Uh, those are usually the best ways to try and take them off. Uh, a lot of times I just end up prying them off. But uh, let's see how it goes this time. I'm just using the tip of my finger now. Usually when you get a few of them off, it will actually come off. You can just take the whole thing off. So again, more thermal paste. Just be careful on where you're putting it. And then we have the chip. So this is some pretty small soldering. If you are not used to soldering or have never soldered before, this is probably not the first thing you want to try it on. Um, but regardless, we're going to do it. So you want to clean off this chip right here. Uh, you can use alcohol to clean it, and I will be using some acetone. I'm going to dump this real quick. So we have two of these down here that we actually want to, are going to be soldering to, so we need to get those pretty clean. Um, one method that actually works for me pretty well to get this stuff off is using a toothbrush. So not one that you currently use, but one that you don't mind getting rid of or an old one. And it will actually get a lot of the crud out in between. You don't want to go too, too hard, but a light dental pass will definitely get through it and won't damage anything. So now we have pretty clean chips. Our capacitors we're going to be soldering to. We are then going to, I'm going to use some acetone to clean that up still some more. I'm just going to put it on a cotton swab. And then just go over it a little bit. Again, not too much pressure or anything because you don't want to damage these. Alright. So. Just find whatever chips you're using. I've actually never soldered to this one before. This is a V1. So I believe that only one of these will actually match. This is a V2. This is a V1. So you place it on here. This little tab right here is going to go under the shield. And then, I believe it should line up. And 
between the chips. So these tabs right here, this one and this one also need to be under the shield right here and this too as well. So what I'm going to do to start is actually move this forward so you guys can see the soldering. I'm going to take some solder, take some flux. Uh, this is called tinning, where pretty much you put a very small bit on there. Um, so it's easier to get the solder joints. This is just some basic flux I've got off Amazon. Let's put a little bit of flux. I guess we can do these too. Flux is pretty much needed. If you don't use flux, you're probably not going to be able to do this or it's going to look really rough. So, take your soldering iron. I'm just using an angled one. Kind of see that, but it is pretty fine tipped. I'm going to take a little bit of solder and actually just get it on there. And then, <clears throat> just going to go over these until it turns silver. I'm not putting any globs on there. All it is is just a little bit until it turns silver. Kind of smooth around. So I'm going to do it for the last other small ones, there's four more. Again, you don't want a glob on there because if there's a glob, it may not sit correctly when you go to solder. So some people skip this or it's not necessarily needed, but I like to make things easier for me. So all right. So as you can see, if I could get this to focus at all. And it looks like it's not going to focus, so. It's on there. Let's see if I can get one more time. Nope, nothing. You can kind of see the difference between the gold one and the silver one. Eh, maybe not really, but. It's on there, it's tinned. So, again, we're gonna put this under here. We're gonna put these two underneath the shielding as well. And line everything up. Let's see which way we going. Those are there. So I think we have everything lined up. So the first things you're going to want to do is to solder these two points down. So again, I'm going to use some more flux because you're pretty much soldering to the case this shell, so I'm going to put it pretty much on the joints again. And now, I'm going to use some more solder. This time I want a little bit of a glob. Again, not a lot. Don't know if you can really see that. A little bit on there. I'm going to hold this down so it doesn't move. And then I'm just going to hold it on the point. Until it's on there. Move it up for you guys to see. So that's on there. So then we're going to do the same thing with that one. Get 
Okay, not a whole lot. I'm still going to hold it down just in case. This, I'm sure, is just acting as your ground. Alright, so then we have just these four. I believe that's for the most part it. So I'm going to... Get a little bit more solder and those these are a little more tricky up oh, first we're gonna put some flux on there so you want to get the flux on the chip but you still want to get some on the actual capacitor that you're gonna be soldering to So with the flux, you actually may not even see the capacitor since it's so small. I'm going to try to keep my head out of the way, but... I think that one's done. Pretty much what I try to do is touch the chip, the actual PCB board, ribbon board, and actually try to touch the capacitor at the same time that way it's connected to both and hopefully you get that joint you may have to leave your soldering iron there for a little bit uh, but you don't want to leave it on too long because it may actually disconnect it from the actual uh, CPU chip which you don't want so I think that's on there. Quick sec. Looks like it's on there. So then we're gonna do the other two. Same thing. Just gonna put a little bit of solder on there. This is one of those things you definitely, if you've never done this before, you want to take your time on. So, those should be on there, and then it looks like I gotta take this other part out. So This piece right here looks like it's going to be going into 
this right here, I believe. Um, I'm going to take this off. I forgot to do that earlier. Still needs to come off here, but for now, we are going to... Actually, let's do that right now. Kind of about that. That's uh, kind of different. So put that back. Now we got to get this thing in here. Got to be careful with this tab. And I believe, let's see. Putting it upside down. So you can lift this up, I guess, to put this in. You don't want to put too much force on it because you may end up ripping something else, stuff that we just soldered. So once that's on there, I'm going to close that. And that's going to be there. Uh, for me, I actually want to test it. So I'm going to put the memory module uh, right here. I'm going to plug the battery back in. You don't need to put your heatsink in for this, but this is just testing. And if we get the boot.dat screen, then that means we did the installation successfully. I'm going to hold this chip just so it doesn't fall. And let's turn it on and see what happens. So a mistake on my part. Uh, this piece right here, you have to actually make sure that it's plugged into this one right here. You can kind of see it's right there on this finger. That connector has to be in there. Make sure that's in. Make sure your memory model is in. It's like a, you could say like an extension. So, it should blink. Turns on, it'll blink blue. You want it to blink green. And then it should have the uh, boot dot dat. And that's pretty much it. So when you're putting everything back together, uh, I always re-thermal paste my, my boards. I just use some simple Arctic Silver 5. It's probably better than the gunk that they comes with it. Um, and so we're going to turn that off. Uh, you just re-thermal paste that. Re-thermal paste everything else. Um... You have the option to include this little debugging port thing. Um, when you do that, I just find it easy to pretty much cut a slit here and here so this all fits pretty nice and snug. And so it'll be like about here and there and you get space and just put your system back together and that's it. So, if you guys have any questions, you can put in the comments below. I will answer as best as I can. This is my first video, so go easy on me, guys. But also, if you guys have any suggestions, I'm always up, up for suggestions. So, thank you, guys. Bye. I do want to mention that when you put this back over, you are going to have to cut a little slit into this thing so that you don't pinch this ribbon. So, you just kind of line it up. Uh... I just took a permanent marker, kind of did around the sides of where it would be, and then I just cut a little slit, that way that it doesn't pinch that cable, because 
that's the last thing you want because you don't want anything to short out. So just want to include that. And then you wrap everything up and you're good.